Shortly after the Civil War, 150 years ago, Baltimore was growing rapidly with a great influx of immigrants. Many were poor, and the most destitute were the elderly. On April the 6th, 1869, the Little Sisters arrived in Baltimore from France to create a home for these elderly poor. And only four days later, they welcomed their very first resident. Within a few days, the sisters were caring for five aged poor. St. Martin's home was born on Valley Street. Nearly 100 years later, the old home on Valley Street had outlived its usefulness. Safety codes had changed, and so had the neighborhood. The old home was increasingly becoming dangerous to both residents and for the Little Sisters. A site next to St. Charles Seminary in Catonsville was available. On May 25, 1969, during the centennial year of their arrival in Baltimore, the Little Sisters and the residents moved to the new St. Martin's on Maiden Choice Lane. Our first Little Sisters who came to the United States, coming from foreign lands, um, several Little Sisters, maybe one or two could speak English, they made the sacrifice and were very generous to come to the United States and we celebrated them and the legacy that they have left us and we have followed in their footsteps. Hundreds of elderly benefited from the special care provided by the Little Sisters, but years of caring took a toll on the new St. Martin's too. So in 2010, St. Martin's planned an upgrade with brighter living space, a renovated chapel, updated safety codes, upgraded mechanical, electrical, lighting and plumbing systems, and a Main Street social hub. And for the first time, physical therapy included space for exercise and wellness for active residents. The renovation also provided a livable convent for the Little Sisters. Renovation meant that young women, beginning formation as Little Sisters of the Poor, could come again to St. Martin's home as postulants. New vocations mean that St. Martin's is the cradle for those preparing for a joyful life as a daughter of St. John Chagan. The building here at St. Martin's has changed over the past several years, but the home itself remains the mission of St. John Chagan. Her vision and mission continues here in the home where we show dignity, respect, and love towards the residents. And we really count on our staff and our volunteers and our associates to help us continue this vision and mission of St. John Jugan for another 150 years. My wish for the Little Sisters, of course, first would be for um, a, an abundance of vocations. <laughs> you know, the Little Sisters of the Poor, they establish a kind of the footprint that we fall into. And I've always been really uh, pleased because the example that they set is one of um, humble service, and compassion, and it's real easy to follow that when you're following in the step of a little sister. Today, in 32 countries around the world, the Little Sisters of the Poor offer hospitality to the needy aged and care for them with dignity and respect. You have your own freedom, familiarity with everybody, and everyone's so friendly, and they can't do enough for you. I can't complain one bit. If um, you could give the Little Sisters something for their 150th anniversary, what would you give them? I give my prayer and my love. That's the only thing I have left. I don't need any more. <laughs> I feel St. Martin's Home um, provides um, a true family. As a family member of a resident, I had the utmost faith that my dad was being cared for as if I was caring for them myself. The GNAs and the nurses and the sisters especially um, were able to surround him with the type of love that only gets mimicked by a, a very devoted son. This is the legacy of St. John Chagan. Care for the dying is the summit of the sisters apostolate. Does my life still have any value? Is it worth living? To each person, the Little Sisters respond with a resounding yes. The Little Sisters of the Poor are needed today more than ever. The Little Sisters respect the uniqueness and dignity of each individual person as they reach the end of their life. The care of the dying is a powerful witness to the culture of life.
What's valuable to me in my ministry here at St. Martin's is the opportunity that I have to walk with our residents uh, every day, They're listening to their stories and their memories, have, letting them share those with us so that they stay alive in someone's heart, but also to bring healing and hope to them at their last uh, years of their life, to make it joyful, a moment that they are truly living and not just in hold and waiting for something, but knowing that there is something more for them to do each day. Yes. Over 150 years, there have been challenges that strengthened the sisters' resolve. There also have been plentiful blessings, including you and your support. The Little Sisters give thanks for all who have generously supported their mission to the elderly poor. Joyfully and confidently, the sisters embrace the future and step forward full of hope because of boundless trust in divine providence. <laughs>